Yo, what's up, everyone? God bless. Pray that you're doing well. Uh, hello there. Um, as you can see from my, if you're seeing my community posts, um, I've been having uh, quite a few conversations <laughs> or more or less just comments back and forth with some people, some really, uh, really puffed up religious folk. Um, and one of them tried to confirm and deny in the same thought what I was saying. So this is sort of the level of deception, the level of manipulation that happens when someone is holding or suppressing the truth and unrighteousness while trying to come under a guise of agreeing with you and sometimes even saying, oh, brother, you're such, you're such a blessing, blah, blah, blah. And then halfway through their comment, they, they back up and then change the definition of what they were actually saying or just further specify what they were actually saying and showing the true definition of what they're using for certain words and things like that. It's the level again, like our, uh, our brother, David, uh, David Benjamin said in a couple of videos, I don't know how long ago about wearing a costume to get into the sheepfold to deceive and manipulate and carry people off as spoil and um, confuse and try to steal people's crowns and and, and get people uh, uh, away from looking at Christ and being confident in Christ. And that that level of deception and the skill set almost and uh, the deceitfulness and the costume is becoming more and more intricate and more and more... Um, it's 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 becoming harder and harder to spot because their language is getting so much. Uh, they're just twisting so much more. And I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say effectively, but they the the spirit of error behind it is so intense that it can really cause a lot of confusion. But I say that so like before when David said this, it was like oh all you had to do is you just had to look like a caveman and talk like a caveman. Ooh, uh, and you like got in as long as you had a club and were wearing a loincloth and everyone's like, oh, it's the caveman, uh, uh, you know? But then it turned into like, okay, you actually have to be, uh, now you got to be a jander, right? It's a little more, little more upkeep, um, a little bit harder to do. You got to have your broom, you got to have your bucket, you got to have your, your onesie overalls, whatever, whatever the janitor wears. Um, and you gotta, you gotta talk some of the language about cleaning supplies and stuff. So you have a little bit more knowledge and you're, and you're mimicking a little bit more and people are like, oh yeah, let him in the building. It's fine. But now it's like astronauts. Now it's like neurosurgeons. Now it's like all of these things. And then it's like these people are taking up multiple occupations and wearing multiple costumes at the same time, depending on the type of doctrine that someone has about like even parables or the rapture or rewards or anything like that. They're wearing different costumes to infiltrate different sects of the sheepfold of the, of the sheepfold in order to deceive certain, certain areas. And then they can go back out, put on a different costume and then try to go infiltrate another area. It's absolutely ridiculous. So like this person tried to tell me, I hope that all that makes sense. I'm just saying all of that to emphasize the point that we need to be very aware of our position in Christ, of the fact, and we can have boldness and confidence in Christ and cling to Christ alone. And we are dead and our life is hidden in Christ with God. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So when someone tries to point you away from Jesus Christ. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 you're saved by grace. But now you need to make sure that you go and you need to do this. You need to get plugged in. You need to do all these things. You need to not, you need to uh, not disobey God. Okay. Well, they're using a law commandment, sin oriented definition of obeying the truth, which is not according to the scripture's definition of obeying the truth, which is believing the gospel. So if someone's unclear about the definition scripturally of what obeying the truth means, they've now successfully worn that costume and infiltrated that that part to affect that believer in order 
so that they can affect them, so they can cling to this person and say, oh, teach me, teach me, what am I supposed to do? So that that person who's bringing vain jangling, law righteousness, law sanctification, law rewards, all of that nonsense, works-based doctrine, now gets their reward now, which is the flattery and the worship and the, and, the, and the teaching position, the elevated position that they're desiring, that they're trying to steal from Christ. They're trying to steal the promises from Christ and make themselves something when in fact they are nothing. And they're wearing these different costumes to affect different people who are at different walks. Before it used to be a caveman. Now someone can wear the costume of a neurosurgeon to affect people in that group. If you get what I'm saying, it's sort of like if you imagine a whole pie, right? A whole pie is the sheepfold, is, um, is believers, and then there are slices of the pie where believers might differ on certain doctrines or ideas or whatever else, but they have the gospel right. And you can be deceived and in Galatian air, someone who's wearing that costume can go over to people who believe that it's law sanctification or law rewards, whatever, but at one point they believe the gospel and go and disaffect those people and lead them away from Christ and spoil their crown, spoil their confidence, spoil their boldness in Christ and get them living in a place of condemnation and fear nonstop. And then there's another slice of pie where people can say, oh, it's a, a, pr- a pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib rapture, but they have the gospel They believed it at one point um, and go in there and wear that costume to affect those people. And then they can go blah, blah, blah. You get what I'm saying. So they can go in in a number of ways and change definitions. And it's getting so minute now that the wrath of God, which is not on the believer, they're going in and changing the definition of what the of what God's wrath is to say, oh, no, no, no. God's wrath isn't like this judgment. It's not destroying evil. No, God's wrath is the absence of God's presence. So what does that do? What does that imply for the believer is that if you're not feeling the presence of God, if you're not just overwhelmed and drunk in the spirit and all this stuff and just living hoo-ha all in the, up in the high in the clouds and on, on a roller coaster of this like constantly feeling just elated and out of body experience with God's love and all this stuff. This is what these people apply it to. That if you're not feeling the presence of God, oh, then the opposite is I must be under God's wrath. Well, if I'm under God's wrath, I'm going to be confused. I'm going to be worried and I'm going to be fearful. What do I need to do to get out of God's wrath? Okay, well, I believe the gospel, but is there something else for me to do that I need to that I need to get sorted so I'm not under God's wrath because I want to be feeling God's presence. So if I'm not feeling God's presence, I'm under his wrath. So I better get to work. I better do something. What does this person say who came in in this really fancy looking costume, but inside their whitewashed tombs, right? They're ravening wolves coming to kill, steal, and destroy. They're coming to devour people who are not clear on the doctrine of Christ and that everything is by grace. Everything is through faith. Everything is in Christ. We are complete in Christ, period. If you don't understand the minute details of a lot of different doctrines, but you are focused on Christ, that's fine. Like, I hope, I hope, I hope this is making sense. It's just people, we have to be so, uh, sober minded. We have to be sober minded. We need to cling to Christ and the gospel and we need to stay focused. Like I said, we need to stay We need to be sober minded, not get drunk with and not be blown about by every wind of doctrine of people trying to bring in fear and condemnation. No, fear and condemnation has been dealt with by Christ. Now, as a believer, we may go through periods of feeling the fear, feeling condemnation, but what do we do? Do we believe someone who says, oh yeah, that's because you don't feel the presence of God, so you must be under his wrath, so you better fear and you're condemned? Well, what does that imply to the gospel and salvation? The gospel says that when we believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day for our justification, we are no longer condemned, period. So if I'm feeling condemnation, if I'm feeling bogged down from from these accusations, if I'm feeling like, oh, I made a mistake, oh, I sinned, God's displeased with me and all this stuff, that's 
the mind set on sin, the consequences of sin, and not our position in Christ. As in like the consequences of sin if we were under the law. People want to be so sin focused and then try to accuse people who are preaching Christ and him crucified that, hey, guess what? Sin has already been dealt with. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. Again, it's not like we're just like a seared conscience going about, which is what these people are. These other people are, are, are the ones with the seared conscience. The ones who have no fear of God because they're constantly going about killing the children of God, claiming it to be a service to God. They're going about preaching works righteousness, denying the gospel, denying the blood of Jesus Christ, having another Jesus, and then saying, oh yeah, but I'm good, don't worry about it. I'm totally fine. That is a seared conscience. They're literally fighting against Christ. They have a false gospel, an accursed gospel, whatever they've got, and they're fighting against Christ. And yet they have no, they're not trembling at the word in the sense of when we read it and we look at it according to the law, of course we're going to tremble because the law is a magnifying glass telling us everything that we can't be, everything we can't do, exposing sin as exceedingly sinful. It shuts every mouth as guilty before God. The law is the strength of sin. By the law is the knowledge of sin. If you want to grow in the strength and the knowledge of sin, by all means, go to the law. Read the word by the letter and not by spirit and life, by Christ, through the, through the lens of the gospel. But there is a propitiation for sin. There is a, We have an advocate with the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ paid for all sin once and for all. And our conscience, like I was saying, that can, that can struggle with fear and condemnation, can only be purged by the blood of Jesus Christ by faith. We have access by faith in Jesus Christ to know that we have peace with God, that God is pleased with faith. He's not pleased with dead works. He's not pleased with trying to offer up the fruit of the cursed ground to purge your sins, to cleanse you, to move you from the category of not being under God's wrath, as if your fruit, your dead, like your evil fruit by trying to keep laws and commandments, thinking that that's going to justify you or earn you any favor. As if you think that is going to move you into the presence of God. When we know that the law was just a shadow of good things to come and Christ is the reality. Scripture says that Christ is the new and living way. I don't want the old and dead way. There was no way to access the presence of God except by the high priest alone. We have a heavenly high priest, Jesus Christ, who is always interceding for us on our behalf, who is our head and we are his body. So if anything is going on, we come forward by faith in Jesus Christ, knowing who Jesus Christ is, knowing what he has accomplished on our behalf, knowing who we are in him, what he has given to us. Being renewed in our minds, not being conformed to this world. And I'm going to say that's the evil religious world. We're not being conformed to the religious world that constantly wants to preach themselves and tout their own dead works. No, they slander and accuse us. And that's just going to make me want to offend them even more by preaching Christ and him crucified. I'm not going to use big, vain, swelling words of nothing, of gibberish to try and get a point across, to try to win you over, to try and see if you are not settled on the rock, Jesus Christ, to see if you're not settled in the gospel and then to deceive you and manipulate you. That's what these people are doing. They're, they're, they're testing. They're testing who is sound on Christ. They're testing who is trusting in Christ and who is resting in Christ. They're testing it with all of these, again, these big swelling words that are nothing, that are gibberish, that is double talk. They're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. They have so many different false doctrines and they're conflating ideas back and forth to intermingle all of these cherry picked scriptures that are out of context to make it such a confusing message. To confuse people, to baffle people and be like, wait, what, 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 what am I reading? What am I reading? Am I, am I wrong? 
because it's scripture. So I better, I better look at it right. And if you're not laying hold of Christ, believing him, remaining in him, in the sense of abiding in the truth and the truth will abide in you, which is us abiding in Christ, knowing that he is the vine and we are the branch. We abide in him, believing the truth. It has nothing to do with our works. It has nothing to do with our performance. It's just a reckoning on the truth. The just shall live by faith. Reckoning on the truth, believing the truth. So to try and tie this all back to this person trying to wear this other costume. And I don't know if they're a believer or not. And I'm not here to say who is and who isn't. All I go off is is by the profession of faith, right? Because that's what we go off of. We are known by our profession of faith. And if we give the gospel and they do not rejoice in the gospel, to me, that's a huge red flag. If I say praise the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, we are complete in him. And all they come back with is cherry cherry picked scripture out of context, intermingling all these half doctrines that they're just trying to bubble up to confuse the message. And again, they're not just saying yes and amen to the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's a huge red flag to me. I'm not going to listen to these people that have, that can type paragraphs of nonsense while again, misquoting scripture. Before years ago, when I was, when I was first born again, I, I probably would have been just been deceived by this because I was like, Oh, it's scripture. I wonder what they have to say and then try to break it down in my head. But what it comes down to is actually vain jangling. It's a wisdom of men, which is foolishness. It's like an airheaded attempt at breaking down the doctrine of Christ into philosophy, which again, vain jangling men's traditions and, and just emptiness. And again, using that like airheaded, empty language under the guise of scripture and saying that it's the truth and that it has authority and that you better be afraid. It's like, it's such a complicated and like niche costume that these people are trying to wear now. The wrath of God is not the absence of God's presence. Because again, if we're not feeling God's presence, are you then telling me that I'm under the wrath of God? Because if you are, you're lying. You're a liar, period. If you're telling me that as a believer, brothers and sisters, we who believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again on the third day, if anyone tells you that you are under judgment, if you are under the wrath of God, that person is a liar, period. If they disagree, they are wrong. We stand fast in the liberty that we have in Christ. We are not brought back into the yoke of bondage, entangled again with fear. Galatians 5 and then like Romans, what is that, 8? There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We are not under the wrath of God. God is not judging us based off of our performance. If that were the case, why did Christ come and die for us? Why did he send his son If we could gain or earn anything by our performance and God was up there like America's Got Talent on the stage with his giant buzzer saying, oh, you did good. Eh, Sorry, but you failed in one point. Oh, I like that performance. Ding, you get a golden ticket. As if the golden ticket is your own efforts and your own works. It's self-righteousness, pride, it's antichrist. And they're liars. Anyone who comes against the the doctrine of Christ, everyone, anyone who is preaching works righteousness, works sanctification, works rewards, it's against scripture, period. Everything is in grace. Um, So to try and quickly summarize the point of this is that it's, we are hidden, our life is hidden in Christ. We are complete in Christ. Have confidence in Christ, brothers and sisters. It's a beautiful thing to have confidence in Christ. Because when these people come with their giant swelling words of absolute nothing emptiness, that it's just, it's just a bunch of conflated ideas that mean nothing. It's so wonderful that we can confidently just boast in Christ. You don't even need to nitpick whatever they're saying because, I mean, honestly, like when you read through it and it's just like a back and forth, it's a ping pong match with their ideas back and forth and their definitions of lies 
It doesn't matter. We don't. It, it, you don't even need to finish reading. You just say, you know what? Praise the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Easiest way, easiest way to spot someone if you need to mark and avoid them. Easiest way. Boast in Jesus Christ and see what they do. Yay, praise the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. But don't you know you gotta, okay, nope, red flag, peace out. <laughs> or again, they don't even say praise the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. They just immediately, because to me, if they say praise the Lord for the precious blood of Jesus Christ, but you know, you gotta get, you gotta like, you gotta be a part of this thing. You gotta really do this thing. To me, that's more of an accursed gospel. But if they're just like, no, you gotta, they, they don't even praise the Lord when you give them the gospel. They're just like, oh, no, yeah, Sorry. It's all about your performance. Obviously, it's a false gospel. 